NYPD cop sleeping during a protest, shared inappropriate pictures. Now, what, what would be the motivation here? According to the New York Post, NYPD Lieutenant Scott Maline, who was caught in photo sleeping in a police vehicle during a Black Lives Matter march at the Brooklyn Bridge, showed pictures of his genitals to Officer Alexandria Sanchez, a fellow cop, both on duty. Sanchez claimed the 50 year old, 58 year old boss also smacked Sanchez's butt. Um, okay, at least we know he wasn't worried about the Black Lives Matter protesters. Something else was going on. The Lord Tale began in 2019 when Milne became Sanchez's supervisor. Sanchez, 44, was driving Milne with another female officer during the Brooklyn Half Marathon that year when he started talking about his social life. He just started talking about, I'm always on Tinder and I show pictures of myself to women. The married mom of three told the post, this is the picture I show them. He pulled out his phone and he showed us the picture of his penis, New York Post. There's a lot I could say there. Classy. (laughs) Right, did they have to zoom in? Uh, There's more details, okay? He also told the cops he meets women from the dating app at Hot Sheet Hotels. Then he asked, how about a hotel? Sanchez recalled. Sanchez was angry, called him a dirty old man, but she and the other female cop didn't complain because they feared retaliation. Right. Sanchez said she never drove him again, but the frat house atmosphere continued at the precinct. He'll come into a room and be like, everybody take your clothes, take off your clothes, let's party. Sanchez claimed, speaking of the officer and the office where she worked, he would also talk about his penis being circumcised. And then he'd laugh about it. This is your boss? And the New York Post with the details here. Only the best people get promoted. This must be an isolated incident. <laughs> June 2020, Milne was at the Black Lives Matter protest in Brooklyn when he was caught on camera snoozing. Inside a temporary, this guy's a piece of work. It really is a piece of work, headquarters vehicle. Radio in hand, photo show. Another photo shows him lying back in a booth with his belly leaning on a table inside the vehicle. You're just gonna make yourself right at home. 2021, Milne slapped her rear end so hard it irritated a back injury. That's what she alleges. I'm standing by the desk with my sergeant and I'm leaned over. We were comparing notes and I felt a large smack on my buttocks, Sanchez said of the incident in the precinct. I stood up and turned around like, what the just happened? Mm. I grabbed a stapler from the top of the desk and I threw it at him and it hit the door. She also shrieked, my back, prompting Milne to laugh. I didn't smack your back, I smacked your ass, he told her. Is this an SNL skit? We cover a lot of stories, but we did make sure this, this is, yeah, the teams, they, they know what they're doing. The sergeant also laughed. He said, I dared him, but I didn't think he was gonna do it. The sergeant said, according huh. to Sanchez, right, and they're solving crimes. Mm -hmm. Soon after, Milne began to deny her request for time off, put her on tours that made it difficult to see her kids, meted out unfair discipline and threatened to transfer her back to patrol, she alleged. In 2022, she went out sick and Milne called her delegate and said he wanted her out of her position where she was in charge of sending cops to training, she said. She has since been transferred to nights in downtown Manhattan, a 90 minute commute each way from her Long Island home where she has a 10 and 14 year old child. I'm beside myself, she said. I never thought in my career that I would come down this path, it's scary. I've seen what happens to you when you make allegations against a member of service, it's becoming a living hell. NYPD released a statement saying, quote, yeah, I do even have to read it, but I'll go ahead and read it just because, just for kicks and giggles does not tolerate discrimination or sexual harassment in any form and is committed to respectful work environments for a diverse workforce. Mm. Said any investigation would be confidential. I think you better run and tell it. 
I think you better investigate and run and tell it. This is clearly systemic when even the police are telling on the police about this kind of discrimination, this kind of retaliation. There's still those who read about this and say, oh, those cops are good, a few bad apples. This is insane. Mm-hmm. No, it's, I mean, the worst part about this story to me is the retaliation, right? I mean, there's something so chilling about workplace retaliation from a, you know, the police department, uh, people who allegedly enforce the law. Um, there, what's the recourse there? And this is for women who are in law enforcement and also women who are in the military in all um, aspects and, and branches of the military. We know that the cases of sexual abuse, assault, rape are far higher and it's far um, less reported uh, because who do you go to, right? And this is what happens when you do actually speak out about it, right? And and this is what happens when you so-called cross that thin blue line, when you actually um, call out a fellow officer or even your boss. Yep. Um, and you heard in that instance um, where her, you know, her butt was slapped that, you know, it was a joke that the sergeant sort of egged him on to do it. So again, this is why people don't speak out about these stories, but this is classic you know, what the Me Too movement and what we still need to keep fighting for, which is actually a safe mm-hmm. place to not just live and to work and to do your damn job, but also to, to be able to, when something does happen, have some sort of chain of command of accountability mm-hmm. so that person faces mm-hmm. the music. Um, but look, the best thing this guy did was sleep during a BLM demonstration, because let's be real, yeah. there are way too many cops cracking skulls during that time. So yep. good on him, bro, good on you yep. uh, and your little penis pics. Or just taking a little <laughs> nap. I'm glad you uh, you you napped your w- way out of that one. It's so the behavior is so egregious. It's so it's not an inference here, which is real. It's not a covert op. You're literally not having any kind of uh, flirtatious talk, according to <laughs> the woman in uniform who reported this, mm-hmm. and you decide to just start. Showing pictures of, you know, what, and smacking people. That's assault and sexual assault. It's so egregious that we must conclude it is systemic. The problem, though, Francesca, is I don't know how you finally bust up or start chipping away at this blue wall. Yeah. It's there are women who are in law enforcement, not as many, but they're they're there. Mm -hmm. It's, the fear, the retaliation, the nonsense. I don't know how you do it. They tried to bust up, was it AT&T? They broke up too big. Okay, antitrust. Right. And they're still, our bills are still too high. You know, I say that loosely, but I don't know what you do here to protect people, including her children. I mean, also think of like, how potential suspects are treated, right? Like this is nothing. I mean, the NYPD, as many police departments have um, tons of allegations and actually proven instances of sexual assault of inmates of, or of people that were under their control and care, um, people that they were detaining or arresting. So if this is how you treat, again, your fellow officers, how do you treat the people you're supposedly you know, wielding the law over? It's just wild. I mean, how many more instances like this? I mean, kudos to this officer for speaking out. I hope more can speak out. It's only, and this is, you know, we're at a time when the right is telling us that women in law enforcement is woke, the people of color in the military is woke and the whole thing. So anyway, I hope more speak out um, so we can actually push back and change the culture of these places. Yeah, I do. Um, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll keep following the story.